So tell us, who is Fred Thomas? Well, I am a 25-year uh, resident of Simi Valley. I'm a transplant from the San Fernando Valley. Um, I, I moved here. I actually discovered Simi Valley, I, I, although I'd been here. Uh, back in the uh, early 90s, I came out here and realized that it was a, a hidden gem compared to the valley that was becoming a sprawling, overbuilt mess. Uh, and told my wife that I wanted to move here and fell in love with the city. Uh, the small town feel, uh, and, and even more so, uh, what I grew to really fall in love with was uh, the number of people in the city that are actively involved behind the scenes in the nonprofits and the service groups. And it's just amazing to me. There's thousands of people in this community that just give untold hours making a difference in this community. It's just a, it's a good feeling, and I wanted to be a part of it. Um, I'm a, uh, uh, a business major uh, uh, out of college. I, I started working and I have worked for myself my entire adult life. Started as an extremely small, struggling business and then built it up over the years to a pretty good size uh, business now. Um, and uh, there was a lot of tough, lean years and a lot of lessons learned. but. Uh, I've gotten to the point in my life now where I feel like I've got over 30 years of business management and finance experience and I think I have something to offer. Uh, as far as my commitment to the city, um, I have been uh, you know, volunteering in this uh, city for over 20 years. Um, uh, you know, one of my uh, uh, key involvements here has been the Boys and Girls Club. Um, I joined the board uh, 20 years ago and I'm still on the board. Um, I served as its chair during its uh, toughest financial years, uh, restructuring the club and uh, setting it in a new course. Uh, and, and it's thriving today and it's a, it's a wonderful program and it's all about the kids and that's what makes me emotional is making a difference in a kid's life. And you know, um, I've been involved in other things in the community, the police foundation, uh, I've been on the neighborhood council. I've served on the gang task force, the crime task force. Uh, I mentioned before about my passion for making a difference in kids' lives. Uh, about 10 years ago, I was recruited by the Drug Enforcement Administration. At the time, uh, the intent was to find ambassadors in the community uh, to, to, to represent their mission. Uh, but in meeting with a special agent in charge and talking about what I do, um, we decided to kick off a drug education program, which is, I am, to this day, uh, I run that program with about 86 volunteers. Uh, we we uh, team up with uh, communities and with uh, law enforcement agencies throughout the Southland, creating uh, uh, drug education programs, including one uh, that I just set up up at the Reagan Library back in May uh, in the Learning Center, and, you know, trying to make a difference. What do you see as the top three strengths of Simi Valley? Well, number one would have to be the quality of life here. Um, I think that it's a safe city. Uh, people feel uh, like this is a wonderful uh, place. They feel secure because of our, our police department, and they feel safe here, and they feel like it's a, it's a good community, uh, and a safe community to live in, to raise their kids in, uh, raise their family in. Another thing that I mentioned before is the community involvement. It's a very community involved uh, city and I think that that brings people together and, and creates a, a, a real good environment to live in. Uh, another thing that I really like about this city is access and city government. I've never had a problem meeting with the city council and the mayor and the, and the city manager and the police chief to talk to him if I had an issue. And I, I love the fact that the size of our community and the type of relationship that we have allows people to have that type of access. And as a councilman, I would absolutely always encourage that uh, you know, access from anyone, whether it's uh, with ideas or, to, to, uh, or concerns. And I would always want to listen and I would always want to be able to react to those. You talked about the strengths. What about the top three weaknesses? 
Well, I don't know about weaknesses, let's say challenges, okay? Because I know right now the thing that kind of drew me into running for office, which I never imagined myself doing in my entire life, uh, had to do with the, the challenges we're currently facing with our budget. It's something that we will work through, but it's going to take some diligence and a lot of hard work to uh, find uh, solutions to work through that. Uh, our, our expenses are, are, are going up drastically and our, our income side is, is static and, uh, and so it's going to take a lot of hard work. Um, I think that tied into that is economic development. Part of that long-term solution is creating more on the income side and, and how we're going to do that we've got to we've got to find a solution for our town center we need to, to work hard to promote uh, our businesses and to encourage new businesses to come here. We need for, for our residents to, to spend more of their shopping dollars here in town instead of going into the valley or into Thousand Oaks to go shopping. Um, and, you know, I, I, I hear often that uh, you know the challenge for especially a young buyer is buying a home these days. Uh, you know it's a free market, and I believe in a free market. Uh, but at the same time, it, you know it is a real struggle and a challenge. The cost of housing is very expensive. And once upon a time, Simi was a very affordable place to to, to move to, and it's not anymore. Um, you know we've pretty much caught up with the surrounding areas. And uh, although as a homeowner, I'm glad that my property has value, uh, I also care about the fact that there are young couples starting out their families that maybe can't get into a home. And I'd love to you know, find a solution. I have a couple of ideas on that. And what are your ideas? Well, you know, people keep talking about building more apartments. And yes, that maybe that's a more affordable way uh, you know, to find a place for them to live. But I would much rather have that young couple have an opportunity to get into a, a affordable starter solution. Maybe it's not a single family home, maybe it's a, a condo town home type of a, a situation, but what I would like to see them be able to do is to get into something that where there was financing available and a price that was, you know, affordable enough that they could get into it and start building equity instead of paying these high dollars that people are paying now living in apartments and never ever building up that equity to allow them to eventually move into that single family home that they dream of raising their kids in. And I think that I think that there's a solution there. It's gonna take some work and maybe some incentives to try to get that type of project built. But um, I think we can do it. I think it's a doable thing. You talked about the town center. Um, a lot of residents feel that basically like a ghost town over there. It um, is. <laughs> what do you think that the city should do or uh, to to bring in more businesses or to that mall? Well, I'm not sure if the current owner plans on keeping it or selling it. I'm getting mixed messages on that. But I believe the solution here is for the city to decide what they want to see that mall be. Whatever that is, decide what that is, and then make it clear to either the current owner or a future owner how they'll get behind and support whoever's going to do the right thing. Um, you know, right now the, the mall is, um, the owners of the mall are, are uh, pitching a project that the city isn't buying into. Um, it's converting part of the mall into apartments, and I think that their concern is that it's just an opportunity to try to increase property value rather than actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, change the project into an effective project. And I understand where they're coming from. You see places like um, these uh, uh, hybrid, uh, you know, high-density housing slash, you know, open-air malls that have popped up in, in communities, and, and they're great. But they're in high-income uh, neighborhoods, you know, with high-income you know, uh, apartments that, you know, they pay top dollar for with, with uh, concierge service. That's not what they're talking here, and I, I, in, in my opinion, uh, putting in low-cost apartments up there is not going to enhance that mall in any way, shape, or form. Um, I think that, you know, come up with a solution. There's been a couple things pitched. 
One of those is, you know, convert it into an outlet mall. Um, you know, outlet mall isn't a bad thing. I love outlet malls. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the why that piqued my interest was because maybe it would not only get our community members to shop there, but maybe we could capture more park shopping dollars and Thousand Oaks shopping dollars and even San Fernando Valley shopping dollars if we had that. It's right at the freeway. It would not create more traffic in town, it, you know, off and on. It would just, it just seems like it, uh, uh, you know, would be a good idea. Um, you know, a few people have floated that idea. It's not my idea. It been, uh, um, you know, but a few people that I respect, uh, you know, involved in the city and are in planning and stuff have thrown out that idea and, and, it, and it caught my attention. If not that, uh, uh, then uh, I'd like to see something done to create more of a community gathering place there. Um, and what they, would that look like? Well, when they opened up the one in for the movie theater and put that key, it, key lid or whatever they call that in, and it kind of opened that one in, and it's so much friendlier. On the other end, most of the shops are tucked back in there. People, you know, it's not convenient just to go and, and buy something unless you're in there strolling the mall, which um, I don't do. You know, what took me there more often than not was the Apple store because I'm an Apple geek. Mm. And um, were you disappointed when it locked? <laughs> I was beyond disappointed. I, I'm just completely distraught that the only Apple store in history to ever close was in our city, and I think that's really sad. Um, I think we can turn that around, though. So if it's not that, then we, we need to reconfigure the mall in such a way that it's right size for the current type of mall. Retail is not dead. It is changing, though. Some retail is losing out to Amazon and online sales. But the bottom line is there will always be people that like to shop, that like to go and shop. There are things that you want to go try on or look at or test before you buy. So you need to attract that type of retail. But no one wants to be in there unless other people want to be in there. So you've got to create an environment that's going to keep people coming so that the retailers want to be there. I would love to see the other end opened up in such a way that maybe there's a, a park-like setting just like we are here with a nice little fountain, lake, and maybe surrounded by restaurants on the end of the mall, that would be a great gathering place for the community to go to. Um, we have a, a place like that on a smaller scale over at the Regal Center, and you know, people go there and hang out. Well, that on a larger scale, and I think that that could work also. So I think that there's good ideas, and the bottom line is it takes a little research, your background, looking into the reality of it. Uh, you know, are we too close mileage-wise for an outlet to work? Uh, and then once we have that picture, then you talk to the existing owners. Are they interested in doing that, or are they interested in 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 getting a you know uh, uh, just rezoning it, and because they're not going to build it, they're going to sell it anyways. That's that's the part I the answer I would have is you know because what I want to do is I want the incentives of you know, rebuilding that mall to go to whoever is going to redevelop it and make it a success and have an owner of that mall that's interested in its success and wants to see it thrive and then get the city behind that. I think that could be a great thing. Uh, other ways of building income, you know, I think that there's a huge growth in high tech industry, especially like aerospace, secondary contractors and stuff. They're popping up all over the place and they're looking for places they'd much rather come to a place like Simi where it's got a, a you know a, a good workforce rather than moving into a congested area this is a very attractive place we've run out of large industrial facilities space do we have the space for that well there are undeveloped properties that sit undeveloped because you know uh, building a large uh, industrial facility is a, a long-term you know um, payback um, but it's good for the city and maybe there's some way we can incentivize that in getting built because the more of those we have, you know, we just, we have a, a tenant here in town, Aero Environment, very interesting business. And unfortunately they needed more space and were unable to find what they needed here and see me and ended up renting 100,000 square feet out in Moorpark. And my concern is now that they've done that, does more park have the opportunity of bringing the rest of them out and creating a single, you know, campus environment for them out there? I'd hate to lose them because they're an amazing company. But 
there's lots of businesses like that that are popping up left and right and what they bring to to a a, a, a a single unit is a lot of jobs. It's not a bunch of warehouse. It's a lot of jobs, and they're high-paying jobs. And so maybe you know that would create an environment where more people could actually get a really good job here and not have to commute. And we'd have less people driving out of town, which means they're working somewhere else, and they're more than likely eating somewhere else and shopping somewhere else. I'd much rather have them be able to do that here. A few months ago, the city council um, basically rejected the idea uh, of this city being a sanctuary city. Basically, the city council said, hey, you know, California, to the governor, uh, we, we don't want the city to be a sanctuary city. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I'm a person that believes in the rule of law. The rule of law is that the federal law supersedes state law, and I believe that the state is, you know, illegally doing it. I believe that. Now, that being said, um, I believe that it's purely from the standpoint of law, and I believe that if you don't like a law, then you need to change the law. I don't believe anyone has the right to pick and choose which laws they feel are correct and which ones they're going to follow. And that's, we do that way too often with way too many of our laws. Um, that being said, uh, it's, a, it's a hot button topic. Uh, it's been turned into a, you know, a, a, a racial topic and, and it's not that for me. I'm, you know, I, I, I believe that every, every person here has equal rights. Um, and when it comes to immigration, I think the problem is that our immigration system is broken. I believe that anyone that wants to come here to America and become a citizen is willing to do it by playing the rules should have that opportunity and I believe that anyone that wants to just simply come here and work should have that opportunity as well. Again, there needs to be a system in place to allow them to do it and to do it by the rules and when you don't do it by the rules then you're asked to live. Um, but uh, you know, I mean my, all four of my grandparents came from other places, um, I'm sure glad they were, you know. Uh, but, but that being said, I, I just feel that um, you know. Again, you got to play by the rules. You got to do things the right way. And if somebody wants to come here and work and pay taxes, then I would love to have them. Um, uh, I have, um, you know, hired uh, employees over the years. Most of my employees I've had for 15 plus years. Uh, and there are uh, some of them that uh, came here, uh, you know, on a, on a, a, a work permit. Um, I gave them an opportunity to develop a, 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 a career path uh, at my business. And along the way, they became citizens and they've done it the right way. And they're real proud of what they've accomplished. And, you know, these are people that had no skills when they came to me and are, are managers at my operation now. And it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm all for that. I'm all for it. It's, uh, you know, kind of the same way that I, you know, uh, that, you know, we do the programs at the Boys and Girls Club. It's, it's not an after school care operation. What it is, is we're trying to build these kids. We're trying to give them the, the resources and the knowledge and the, you know, and the personal confidence uh, that they need to become a fully thriving adult, uh, you know, and it's just exciting to see someone reach their potential, uh, and, and you know, which is how I, why I got involved in drug education. I got really off tangent here, but why I got involved in drug education was because all too often I see a bright kid with a bright future have that whole future, you know, set aside because they made one bad decision. Right behind you is the facility. Mm -hmm. That's the Boys and Girls Club. Mm -hmm. Do you see drugs as, uh, is it an epidemic issue in, in CME or, 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 or not? Um, it's an epidemic issue in every city in America. There's nothing unique about CME. Some people seem to think that we have a unique problem here. Uh, matter of fact, when I did the uh, uh, program up at the Reagan, 
uh, I, I had the head of the Drug Enforcement Administration come out and be the keynote speaker. And I got a call from the newspaper and they wanted to know why he was coming all the way out from D.C. to speak was because we have such a bad drug problem here. And I said, no, we have the same drug problem every other city in America has. The difference is, Simi Valley is a very proactive community. We get involved. And that's exactly how we are about things. And that's, that's, you know, that's the difference here. The one area there that I would like to make a difference, and I don't know how much I can at City Council, because it is two different unique organizations, but I would love to see drug education brought back into the classroom. That's something that does not exist now, and I want to see that happen. Talking about um, education mm -hmm. um, and our school system, um, would you be in favor of something like charter schools in Simi Valley? Well, I think we have a great school system, myself. Um, I, I think that... Um, Essentially, charter system I, would it, give more power to the parents yeah, rather than the uh, district. Yeah. Well, I'm not opposed to charter schools. I just haven't seen uh, a, a big move for that in our community. I understand it over the hill. The LAUSD is way out of control. My understanding is that within three years they are going to be bankrupt. On the other hand, you see uh, <laughs> Granada Hills Charter High School, yeah. uh, fantastic school. Thriving. thriving. The grades are good. Uh, in yeah. fact, they're are, they are number one mm -hmm. public high school in California, mm -hmm. and it's a charter school. Mm -hmm. um, and do what's you see any benefits is, to that in senior? Yeah, well, operating with the exact same budget, they managed to do more, get a better result. It's you know it, it's it's hard to really understand how that could be unless you know you know I think that the whole thing is local control and I think that in that situation the difference is that the system there is so big that it's not productive. Um, I believe that our school system you know had its challenges there. I think it's come a long way in the past few years. Um, I think it's 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 doing very well right now. I think that you know uh, the one thing I'd like to see is we need to make heroes out of our good teachers. We need to really promote that. You know we always promote the athletes, pro athletes, and politicians. By the way, I'm not a politician. I'm a concerned citizen that wants to make a difference. But um, the uh, you know I I'd like to see the real heroes you know, be our public safety and be our teachers, the ones that, you know, really do build the future and, and make a, our, our lives safe. Who's our favorite president, U.S. president? That's easy, Ronald Reagan. Why? <laughs> um, you know, it's funny. He kind of got into politics in, a, in an interesting way, but his viewpoint was that of a of a of a just a, a regular person. You know, he 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 wasn't in it with a political agenda, and I know I'm sure people think that, but you know, he was in it for America, and and everything he did was about us getting our fair share and us, you know, doing the right thing. He used to mock government. He used to say this, the what, what was it the the nine words you never want to hear. I'm from the government and I'm here to help. <laughs> um, the uh, you know I just I, I liked his style and I would say that he had um, probably the highest rating ever any president will ever have. Um, and to this day, uh, his his library is the busiest uh, li presidential library in the country by far, popular. by far, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm really happy that it's here. I think that was just amazing that we ended up having that here. What do you like to do on your free time? Um, well, what I like to do, um, you well, know, it's interesting. You apparently what I, what do I, you have any apparently what I like to do is volunteer because uh, I'm currently on the board of the Boys and Girls Club, on the board of the Police Foundation. I volunteer, you know, sort of full time with the Drug Enforcement Administration. Um, and I run two businesses. Um, uh, other than that, uh, the number one thing in my life 
is the time I spend with my wife. She's uh, tell us about your wife. She's my partner in life. Uh, that's Debbie. Uh, she's an amazing person. She's just as involved as involved in this community as I am. She was the one that started Sorapimist. I don't know if you've heard of it or not, but it's a uh, it's an organization uh, by women for women and, and girls trying to make a difference in in young women and girls, young women's lives and girl, young girls' futures. And uh, they have just taken this town by storm and have some of the most popular events and, and uh, you know, it's really fantastic. And that was, you know, due to, I mean, literally her hard work for the first three and a half years of that organization. She just recently stepped down as the president of that organization to, to take over being my campaign manager. <laughs> But, um, but we're a, a real team in life. Uh, and our favorite things to do are just to do things together, whatever it is, even if it's just hanging out together. That's, that's what we do. That and of course, um, you know, my two girls and my two grandkids. Do they uh, live in the city as well? Uh, one of my daughters and both of my grandkids do. My two grandkids actually both attend uh, Simi High. And uh, my uh, grandson, um, who's actually been working for me, you know, when he can recently, uh, is uh, uh, just moved up to the varsity volleyball team. And my granddaughter is in her first year at Simi High and is a cheerleader. Uh, she's been competing in gymnastics. She's an amazing gymnast for years and has decided that it's time for her to focus on her education now that she's in high school. As she used to spend a lot of time at the gym. Um, and uh, at Platinum Gym, Tarina's place, amazing place for kids, they, they, they an operation here in our city. One of many, I mean, we have so many great businesses and, and so many great things for kids in this community. Um, the one thing we're missing in this community uh, is something for the older teens, a place for them to go that's a safe and fun place for them. Um, one of the things we've been trying to do at the Boys and Girls Club, and and it's it's been kind of hard because the the uh, the Boys and Girls Club is a great organization, but for teens, it's it doesn't make it the coolest teen hangout. That's something we're trying to overcome. But we we've, we've been trying to figure out a way to actually create a teen center somewhere in town where there was sports and just entertainment, a safe place to hang out. Uh, where kids could go and, and, and not get in trouble. <laughs> well, thank you for your time, Fred. Um, is there anything else you want to say to the voters? Well, all I can say is that uh, I'm in this for the right reason. I'm not in it because I have a, a career in politics ahead of me. I don't. I just love this city and I would love to make a difference. Um, I, I am very familiar with the run, you know what happens in the city. I know most of the players in this city. Uh, I've been involved in the peripheral for a long time, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm making this move purely uh, to because I believe that I've reached that point in my career where I can set some of my other activities aside and focus on this because I think that's what it's going to take, and I'm willing to do that. And, I, and it's, uh, I, and I, I'm, 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 I'm looking forward to the challenge. Uh, what I will say is that um, I will always be available to talk to anyone. Um, I believe that any, any member of this community that has a problem should have at least one person they can go to that will listen to their concerns or listen to their ideas and feel like they're going to get action and that's what they will get from me. Two, uh, every decision I make, no matter what it is, I will always take the time to look at all sides. I'm not going to go in single-minded on anything. I will always listen to everybody's side, have an open mind about it. And then when I'm all set and done to make, ready to make a decision, I will make that decision based on what I think is best for the community as a whole. Thank you very much. Thank you.